Okay, I'm just going to quickly introduce you. Uh, so Andrew Wilcox is a mind mapping software exploiter from cabre.co.uk, so c-a-b-r-e.co.uk, and uh, another website that he has is conferencereaction.co.uk. Um, so it says that mind mapping and mind manager discovered Andrew, interesting how you put it, it's the other way, um, at a conference in 95, he was sat next to someone mind mapping the speeches. And he immediately started using the tools personally and as an engineering manager in Unilever and other businesses. He delivered his first mind manager training session in 2002 and formed Cabri Limited in 2004. He is in, uh, an early adopter of tablet PCs in 2003. He is inked sketched and published hundreds of meetings, discussions, and speeches with Mind Manager. Conference Reaction is the commercialization of this. And this talk is going to be about uh, functions available, how functions available in Mind Manager a decade ago are still relevant to capturing, organizing, and publishing knowledge efficiently and effectively for yourself and your audience. So Andrew, welcome and the uh, floor is yours. Okay, so I'm going to run you through this quick list um, of things here. Um, how to use my manager with Internet Explorer. Um, the MindJets built-in browser, it's a later feature, it wasn't there 10 years ago. Um, something I discovered while I was preparing for this presentation, there are some right clicks you can use to send things from Internet Explorer to uh, MindJet Maps. Uh, the one I most frequently use is just dragging and dropping from any browser, not Internet Explorer particularly. Uh, as a last resort, you can copy and paste, and then I'll show you some examples that I've done and how I use this, um, followed by uh, the map parts that come with my manager, which also now enable you to uh, find things very quickly on the web. And perhaps at this time, some other little reminders at the end. So let's just go, first of all, to the map here and bring up. Internet Explorer as well, which is lurking somewhere in the background. Right, so we've now got uh, the MindJet map up and Internet Explorer. There is a MindJet tool button on Internet Explorer, which gets installed when you install MindJet on your PC and possibly on your Mac as well. I'm talking mainly about Windows here, the Windows version, the desktop version of uh, MindJet. And if you click the button, a link to the page that you're currently on is added to the map along with any um, title text that's associated with that page and we can go to another page here and you can see another link has been added. Now when you're doing this it's quite interesting to see how well people have titled their web pages. Sometimes just leave people just leave them with home as the title. It's very descriptive, doesn't help them in their Google rankings. Uh, so that's the simplest way to take a link from um, the browser and put it on your map. If later on you click the link on the map and it's just the icon at the end, the favicon that represents it, it will come up, and in this case, in the browser inside Mind Manager. If you press Control and click it, it will come up in your default browser, which for me is Firefox. So that's using the Internet Explorer button. Very simple, very easy way of browsing around the web and capturing information about a topic. You may want to research cycle plots. I'll come back to that later. You'll see a map where I've been doing that. Um, you also have the MindJet browser. Uh, we can go to the Visual Thinking Hub in here. Yeah, there it goes. And we can add a link to that page by clicking the link icon at the top right here, add to map, and the link to the page we're currently looking at is added to the map, again with the title text. What was also interesting, I discovered today, I think I may have found it in the past, is that you can send things to the map by right-clicking on them. So, for instance, here, we can send the image to MindJet, and now the image that we've just right clicked on is added to the map. 
useful feature for capturing little bits and pieces as you go around. Um, if you've just got a link, so a link to someone's name, you can send the link to MindJet and it's been added over here. So Jeff Bennett is now on the map as well. And you can do that both within um, MindJet's window using their browser pane. And you can also do it by going back to Internet Explorer and let's right click on an image, send the image to MindJet, and now that image is on your map. All very easy to do. Um, the way I've tended to do most of my work is using Firefox and um, let's just take this cycle metaphor for a minute and find, all right, so I'm in a catalog page now. I can drag links onto the map from Firefox. If I drag an image and it's not linked, it will end up as an image on the map. Some images are linked. Let's find an image that's linked. That one's got a link. If you drag an image which is linked, you get the link and not the image. And if you're in Firefox, there isn't these right click options. You'll have to step back to using the good old um, process of going, you can't copy that image. We copy this image up here. Now, if it's a linked image, you can't copy it. But I can copy this one. You can copy an image. Go to your map. Control Shift Alt V, and it will paste the image into your map into the topic. If you want to edit any of these links, or let's say you just want to copy the URL from somewhere, say someone's put a URL in a piece of text, and you want to put it on your map. Um, let's just add. Uh, if you've got the topic which you want to add the URL to, just go Control K, which opens up the add hyperlink, and Control V to paste it in. And now this topic has got a link to the Visual Thinking Hub, as has appeared in the right hand side on the browser. So there are all sorts of easy ways of taking information from a web page and putting it into your map. So why would you do it? I do it in a few ways. One of them is uh, researching something. In this case, my example is about cycle parts. Let's just minimize this. I do some restoration of bicycles and I need bits and pieces to repair them and restore them and I need to explore. Um, let's pick one here. I'm stopping brakes. Where am I going to get my brakes from? Now all of the stuff you see here has been added to the map using the process processes I've just been describing. I grab a link to the page. If I click on this one, I will go back to these cantilever pads if they're still for sale and the page still exists. There it is. It was something I bought on eBay, but it could be something on one of the um, shops associated here. I can take a lot of information in about brake blocks, find out their prices, and do a comparison. By putting the images on, of course, I can compare the styles and designs and make sure that they're the right design for the bike that I'm currently working on. Uh, I can drag all of the shops as I go around, the online ones, the offline ones, the ones I go to when I'm in London, um, people that do repairs and how much they charge. All of this information I'm storing about cycles. So I've got all of this information on this one map. And it's a great way of just gathering it all up, sucking it all in from the web and putting it into a hierarchy which you can use to do the work that you want to do. You could be researching a project, you could be researching a book, you could be researching uh, a political issue. It doesn't matter. This is a great way of grabbing and structuring knowledge about it. Of course, once it's in a map, you can put notes on there, you can put call outs, you can mark it up with priorities uh, using all the other tools you get with, with MindJet to enable you to focus on particular things like um, what items have I bought for bike Y? Um, which ones do I need to buy next? That sort of thing. Another great way to use it is to analyze a website. 
In this case, I've analyzed my own website. Because when you're crazy in WordPress, you sometimes lose um, you lose the plot. <laughs> you forget what the structure of the map is. How do the products and the shop and the software and the books, how do they all relate together? How are they linked? Are there links between the various pages of your website? And this map, I close it down one level. We've got the hierarchy. I can see what pages I've got now in software and books. This map has been created just by dragging and dropping from my WordPress site. And it's very easy to do. Um, I'll show you something more interesting in a moment. Um, you get the titles that you get in your pages. It's a good way of checking you titled your pages correctly as well. And each of these will then take you to that page on your website. Please, there it's thinking about it. And there I can see that page. I can check it over. And of course, I can mark this map up again with pages that need my attention. I can put in pages which I need to add with some notes about what I'm going to add, add them in WordPress, and then drag it back onto the map. You can also do the same thing with the admin pages for WordPress. So this map maps the WordPress administration of my website. Uh, let's just do this. So you can see it with various uh, aspects of the site, including plugins and things you have to deal with. Um, let's look at appearance. So appearance, various aspects of appearance here. If I want to look at um, the widgets that I've added, I click on here. And now I'm on the widgets page for WordPress if I log in. I think that's me on here. No, if I go through WordPress, it's remembered who I am. Uh, through Firefox, it's remembered who I am with luck. There we go, there's Firefox. I'm always already logged in doing the work. And I'm into the widgets page of my website. So I could go through the um, WordPress menu, but sometimes you forget where things are. And it's all here buried. You can't see it. With my manager, you can open out the menu structure of WordPress and see where everything is. And again, mark it up. So I've got some notes here about uh, in the notes about my star sheet that I need to do. All totally incomprehensible unless you were involved personally in doing it. Okay, so those great examples. That and the one really exciting thing here is I can replace this with. Uh, let's do it for one of my sites. Um, get this the right way around. And I'm just going to replace this in the hyperlinks and replace all. Right. And now this map links to my conference reaction WordPress admin site. Of course, I have one of these for each site with different markets. But if you create a map which is uh, of a generic nature, like the WordPress admin, which is the same for every site, except for the plugins and things that people add, then you can just copy and paste effectively here. Do a search and replace with the two different URLs. And now this map works on the other site as well. I'm just wondering whether anyone can hear me, if anything's happening out there. Yes, we can still hear you. Oh, that's good. It's, it's very weird speaking to nothing. Anyway, right. So here's just the final little twist in the tail here. Uh, let's just do this with a new map. And to hide this out of the way. Oh, no. There we are. There's a feature which has been in my manager for a few years. It's not one of the last decade ones, but it's certainly this decade or even this century ones. Um, and these are the map parts called web services. And you can do searches from within my manager. It wants to know what to search for. And um, we could do visual thinking. And now it's going away and doing a search on visual thinking. And it's producing the top 10 results for visual thinking on Google. And you can click from these to um, the web pages in the notes you see um, 
whatever the web page has been described as in the meta text of that website. Um, you can look through, this isn't a good list to look through, quite often you do searches of this nature, let's do a different search here. So I add my name to here and go, let's fix the website. It will now search for Andrew Wilcox for the first 10 of them. And I know that this one isn't me and uh, that one's not me and I'm not an attorney and I'm not the bloke in the shed, and I don't do Calpol, Pomoma, and I'm not AWAX. So I could delete the, whoops, I didn't want to do that. Let's go back, try that again. Should be able to just delete the ones which aren't me. I've selected them. Hmm. Oh, I know, I've got Andrew Wilcox selected as well. There's always a reason why things don't work, and it's normally you. <laughs> So now I've reduced. <laughs> so I've now reduced the search results to the ones that are relevant to what I want to do, and that's my timing out here. One last thing on on this uh, is um, I'm going to insert an RSS feed now, and I've already done some. So you have news feeds. Um, you can predefine them. So I've got one here for an auction I'm involved in. I add this to the map. It's basically showing the last few posts that we've done on our auction site. And I'm going to, am I going to, right, the idea was to have another RSS feed here somewhere, which I could just plug in and show you how it's done. Uh, let me think, who's got an RSS feed? It's difficult sometimes to find these now on websites. So it doesn't look as though these people have one. If you go on the fluentbrain.com, there's one on the uh, top right corner. On which one, sorry? On my website, Fluent Brain. Right. Let's go there. And we're going to have to move on uh, to Jim in a few seconds. Yep. There we go. There's Fluent Brain. We have to go to the top level. Nope, not the, not the business model one. Yeah. Just uh, Fluent Brain. This is the last thing. Right, I've got an RSS feed here. And I just want to copy the link. Copy link. Go back to my manager. And to define a new news feed, you add a new news feed to the library. Put in the URL for the news feed. It gets created. There it is, and now it's added to the map. And that's what Matt's been saying through his RSS feed. So there you are, a quick summary of all of the different ways you can add information from the web to your maps and do your research. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. That was really interesting. Um, so thank you so much, Andrew, for your presentation. And I actually learned uh, several things about the features of MindJet. Um, especially the uh, integration with the uh, browser, which I've never used, but um, thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to the video. If you wish to contact me and ask further questions, all the links are here. This is what Cabray does and where you can see Cabray's output on the web and Conference Reaction, which records and publishes events and again, publishes them on the web. Thank you.